Hi there, Scott Moyes here from Kepro Systems in New Zealand. Today I'm just going to cover a cheeky little workflow um, between SolidWorks and Inventor HSM um, for bringing in um, some SolidWorks data uh, using the AnyCAD workflow and then probing um, the stock to um, align the coordinate system on um, a Haas UMC750. It could apply to a, any Fanuc based mill as well um, with probing. Uh, the Renishaw probing cycles is what's supported at the moment, but that's not to say that uh, any of the others couldn't be supported as well, like Blum, for instance. Um, all right, so let's get stuck into it. So this is what we're going to end up with. I'm just going to go back to the beginning, clear out that reference, and start again. We've got this fifth axis vice sitting on the bed with some um, some jaws that float backwards and forwards symmetrically and self-centering. Um, about the center line of that axis. The SolidWorks file we've got here is um, just a, f a pretty simple part, it's not a five axis part, it's just to demonstrate the workflow. Um, and the stock has been modeled up inside SolidWorks. Okay, now they could also be mod modeled up inside Inventor HSM or defined um, using the, t um, the setup tools within uh, Inventor HSM. But if you model it, you get the ability to um, constrain or joint the stock to these jaws. So on the assemble tab you can click on the drop down here and select place imported CAD files and then navigate to wherever your SOLIDWORKS file is. Now this will work with Creo files as well or NX or CATIA and then open that file up. You can switch to the select tab here and load the model and choose to either include or exclude um, other bodies or components if it's an assembly. So in this case I do want to bring through the stock um, and I want to bring through, you know, I want to reference it, not convert it, and I want to bring through um, only the solids, nothing else that's inside that file. Click OK. Alright, so now it comes to placing this. I'm just going to left click in the background here and just place it anywhere um, because I am about to use a joint. A joint's very similar to in Fusion 360, um, just a slightly different user interface. And I'm going to tie. Oh, no, I need to reselect that, cancel that joint. Just got to make sure that the circles are in the correct orientation. So that's in the correct orientation now. And I can just flip this backwards and forwards until I get, get it to where I need it to be. And apply that joint, and then I'll do the same thing on this side. Yes, I do. And when I click OK, the jaws snap into position. To show you the any part, any CAD part, if we come back into um, SolidWorks here, and we can change this dimension to say 3.5, um, rebuild, save the file, save the file a second time, and then come back in here. And we can see that there's a red lightning bolt next to this any CAD reference that we've brought in this component, and to update it, we can click on this global update or local update, whichever option you want to choose. Global update will update everything, all of the references and all of the sub-assemblies. Whereas local will only update everything at the top level. So there we go. You saw that the vice, the vice jaws adapted to suit the size of the stock. And uh, away we go. So let's get into the cam. Um, I'll delete this setup for now and start again. So on the from the cam tab, select setup from the ribbon. We're going to be doing milling, and we just need to make sure that we get the model selected and pick the correct body. So there's our body. You can see that it's already trying to um, figure out what stock to use um, by using relative size box. Well, we, we don't want to do that. We want to go from solid and select that solid right there. Okay, so now we need to set up our coordinate system. And to do that, I'm going to choose the um, select z-axis plane and x-axis option. Now I can pick the top face here and it aligns my z-axis, makes it normal to that face and I'm, I'm fine with where the x-axis is. Um, I do need to specify my um, the origin position so I'm going to set that to the top center face here of the stock. And that's it, we're all set up and ready to go. Um, of course we can define our fixtures here as well. 
and then we can start doing some probing. So the first thing we need to do is select our probe tool. And I've got one saved in this document already, so I'm just going to reuse that. And then pick the top face. The first thing I need to do really is probe my Z, not the X and Y. So I'll switch over to the Z surface. Um, I do have the ability to um, position the probe um, where I select on the surface, okay? Or it will just go to um, some, some position close to the center of that face. So there we'll go, now we'll change, just change this to um, Z surface probe. So that when we post the code out, um, this is the comment that will appear above that section. And then we can repeat this again. Select the same tool. For some reason it's not remembering it, it should. So I'll get that reported. And here, we're now we're probing the X and Y as a boss. Okay. We've got the heights here as well. So the clearance height is re a really safe height. If we can bring this down so it rapids down um, soon to a, a closer position. We've already set the Z at that point so we're good to come down to a, a, a known location and you might be wondering what where we're probing from I didn't cover that in the setup so we're actually probing from um, in this case G G54 so 0 and 1 in these offset values is G54 2 is G55 and so on regenerate those this time we're going to call this the X and Y rectangular boss probe and then finally we're going to probe this face here and switch it over to a long x-axis we can set the spacing up to something bigger we'll go with 80 there we go and that's all we need for that. So x axis angle along x axis. And the reason why we're doing this is because you'll notice that I've, and this is, I've exaggerated it, that the vice isn't set up um, to be perfectly aligned to the table. So um, this probe will come along, probe the job, and then pass a c-axis rotation into the g54 offset so what does the code like look like when we post it well we'll use the umc 750 post that comes included in the software select post choose where we want to save the file which fires up in the um, the backplot editor and we can see now we've got those comments in here z surface probe xy rectangular probe an angle along x-axis probe and we can see how it's probing the angle using this cycle here and then storing that angle into a parameter and passing that back to the c-axis offset position um, on the G54 work offset so hopefully you find that you found that useful and um, catch you again next time cheers for tuning in take care